uppercut again, and then a chopping right hand. Both got there, and now Booker's in trouble. Ten seconds, stop. Holds on. Wait, ten seconds, stop at the bell. Let him go. Let's go, Bob. Stop at the bell. Tony opening up, and a big round for him in round two. You know, Tony, the reason he's able to land an uppercut like that, he has a lot of confidence in his own ability to take a punch. I know Booker's not a big name guy, but he is a big guy, and Tony spent most of his career south of heavyweight. Yet his confidence in his own ability to absorb a shot lets him step in with hard shots like that of his own. Well, Tom Arnold, you predicted a second round knockout, and honestly, Tom, I think if that fight was a minute longer, if that round was a minute longer, you'd have been right. Yeah, and if I was scoring this like a real fan, it would be 10-2 Tony that one, but I'm gonna give it 10-8 because I know the damn rules. He almost had him. No, you're absolutely right. He did almost have him, and uh, that's a good score by Tom Arnold. 10-8. That's right. I wish there was more liberal system of scoring in boxing. Tony dominated the whole round, hurt him throughout the round. Why not give Tony that extra point? That's right. I, no, I absolutely agree. Well, they tried that in the state of New York for a while. Not successfully, I might have. <laughs> round number three. So he beats Booker with a sharp jab. Booker is continues to land the left, though. It's surprising to see Tony get hit even that much. He's so good defensively. But he's just Booker. kind of walking through that. He right. is. Right. And he's, nice and he's throwing his own jab with such conviction. It's rocking Booker back. Blood continuing from the nose of Rydell Booker. It was caused by one of those uppercuts in that right, second round. Notice also Tony started the jab to the body, the soft midsection. Rydell's soft midsection. Now, then he started bringing it up to the head. Booker hits a roundhouse right that misses from Tony. And there's a good right to the body, right to the, right to the head, right to the body. And Tony senses that Booker's in trouble. And he may be. I'd like to amend my prediction of a seventh round knockout. I'd like to put that down about the fourth. Tom would like to extend his to the third. I have to say, going into the fight, I agreed with Tom. I thought this fight might go two rounds, but right now. No, it's he, not. He studies guys and breaks them down slowly. And, and the thing about James is he enjoys it. There's an uppercut again. And that is really becoming a weapon. And it starts with a shot to the body. Uh, stop, 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 stop. Let's go. Booker, by the way, not just fighting to survive, not running away and holding on. He's fighting with a lot of heart. He's in trouble again. That was a right uppercut and then a left cross. And even the jab is knocking Booker backwards now. Booker also, when he moves to his right, his feet are crossing incorrectly. Tony lands a punch as Booker moves to his right, crosses his feet like that, he's gonna knock him down. Those body shots are just hellacious from Tony. All right, stop, take a deep breath. Let's go, deep breath, both of you jump. Deep, deep breath. And Booker's just allowing Tony just to walk to him now. I mean, look, James Tony, after an 11-month layoff after an injury, is taking on a young undefeated heavyweight, 23 years old, a pretty determined guy, I mean, not a guy who's just coming to lie down, and it's a mismatch. So far, the fight is a mismatch. That's uh, how nice good that. James Break. Tony is. Nice I think that. that's Break. absolutely right. Well said. And this is a former middleweight, people, middleweight. But let me ask you about Chris Bird's point that he made earlier on the Best Damn Sports Show, and that is talking about the fact that really the guy he's fighting is a blown-up cruiser. Well, I mean, James is a blown-up middleweight. Chris is a blown-up middleweight. There, a lot of the better heavyweights in the world right now are, are smaller guys, smaller, skillful guys from the younger, from the lighter weight division. I, I notice that you're saying that when you're sitting next to me, not when you're saying it when you're sitting next to Chris. Right, stop. Break. <laughs> nice to relax. Deep breath, both. Deep breath. Booker trying to figure out the answer here, and I'm not sure he has one. All right, stop. Break. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Let's go. Booker steps back, takes a deep oh. breath. Good shot again by Tony. Stop Big round ball. once again. Ball. Well, right now, Tony putting a whooping on Rydell Booker. Let's listen in. Yeah, hold his nose for him. <laughs> Everything we worked on, man, you throwing out the window. Everything we worked so hard on. What's going on? When he comes to you, step back. Keep the one, two down the middle. Sure, sure. Listen, everything okay, baby? Yeah. Listen, when he comes to you, step back. Just run through down the middle. Get the angles. Boxing. That's all you got to do. You sit right there in front of him. Everything That's like he never stood up a cup. 
Spin him around off you. Joe, Finish the right hand. Come up Let's go. Too many people up there. That's all you got to do. Joe. Yeah. In the corner of James, James Tony. No, this gentleman. Get down, Joe. Let me pick you guys up. Put the hook right hand. Come on. I got him down right here, man. All right. You got to stop up. Here. Jab and the hooks that work up here. He's right up in the air. Jab, hook, and finish him with the right hand. Freddie Roach was not the most skillful fighter of his era, Barry, to say the least, but the reason he's such a good trainer for James Tony, besides his credentials, he's an excellent trainer, is he is real. Tony is real. And when Freddie Roach says something as tough as he was, as honest a fighter as he was, James Tony's got to respect it. Absolutely. You said it. I mean, he, had, he wasn't the most stylish fighter, but he had one of the biggest tickers of anybody I've ever seen. All right, stop. Break. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Sean, you were in uh, the corner of Rydell Booker. What, uh, what's the thought there? Well, Barry, I was talking to Henry Hill and watching him. Sense of urgency over here. They know that Tony is coming after him, so they're trying to get Rydell to turn, to take a half step back and throw uppercuts. They say he's coming. you got to fight him, Barry. Well, he's trying to fight him, but he's finishing second. That's not real good in this sport. A lot of fighters have tried to come and fight James Tony, right, including Break, belt deeper, holders deeper, like Prince deeper, Charles deeper, Williams. Champions like Mike McCallum, pound for pound guys like Michael Nunn. Most of them have failed. Booker now just covering up. It's all about the body shots, though. That's really what has done it so far for Tony. Tries another one with the left hand. Even Vasily Girov, who was an undefeated gold medalist, the, voted the best boxer in the games that year. Sharp right hand. By most Tony. of his fights by knockout, undefeated cruiserweight belt on, holder, and Tony beat him. James Tony is one of the most skillful fighters you'll ever see. He's also one of the toughest. Get that camera back. Little old pro technique right there. Tap him once, tap him twice. Get him used to that speed and that rhythm. And then he lands the hard shots. Well, he lulls him to sleep. Head to head. Tony just kind of walks out of there. He's giving him a false sense of security here. That's why Tony is tapping. Didn't tap with that one. Tony laying in on him a little bit more in this round. Sometimes you'll see a guy take a round off. Well, he also threw a vicious flurry early. James Tony is 36 years old. Yeah. There's that uppercut again. Boy, that's a big punch. Now, if you're in Rydell Booker's corner, you have to ask yourself, why, you know, it may be time to go away from what you've practiced. It's obviously not working. I think either you stop the fight or you tell him, Rydell, load up with everything you have on home run shots this round. We're giving you one round to do it, and then we're stopping it. But this is clearly not working. You can't box with James. No, absolutely not. And I'm not sure he has enough pop. I, th I think Tony might have already seen the best of Booker. A 220-pound man, though, if he puts everything he's got on it, anything can happen. Maybe give him one more round to try it, and then stop it. So even though Tony is not doing a lot in this round, he's still doing enough to win the round. Yeah, big. Booker wide margin. covering up once again. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell, gentlemen. Ten seconds. Tony's just kind of laying in All right, on stop. Him. Break. Here we go. Let's go. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Four seconds left. Finishes it with a sharp right hand. Don't pull that shit, son. I told him not to do that, James. He won't do it again, okay? You see Tony with the right hook to the body, right uppercut to the head. Remind you of anyone, Barry. That was Mike Tyson's favorite combination. Daddy! Why are you so quick on the draw, hook Tom Arnold, how'd you see that one? Well, first of all, the ring girl gets a 10. <laughs> I'm going to go another 10-8. I, I know you guys don't like it, but, but he's the first one to right now cut these holding. You know, he's, he's winning. I don't want to do his best round, but I got to give him I got to give him 10. Hey, cool James. Tom, I don't like it. I love it. That's exactly right. If more people in boxing used the scoring system cool right the way now. it was intended, that would have been a 10-8 round. You're right, my friend. <laughs> IMAX. <laughs> Is the Harold Letterman of, uh, the, of Fox but because, Sportsnet. Because Tom's coming to it from a fan's point of view, he's sitting there, I have 10 points. No, he's right. Why should the loser get automatically nine when he just got beaten up all round? I agree. Tony just flashed a little smile at you and I. Right, I doesn't want to get off that stool. Every second on that stool felt good to him. You blame him? Stop, stop. Nice and relaxed. Let's go. This is round five. Tony kind of took round four off and still won the round. Booker comes out trying to jab Tony. Let his, let his arm go, Booker. There's 
Yeah, goes on that yeah, team again. That right was, that was a shot. Hands are free, gentlemen. Hands are free. And he is trying to load up. Hands are free, gentlemen. Oh. And how much of this do you want your guy to take if you're in right L's corner? You, there's always the chance you can land a lucky shot. Something freak can happen. Tony can roll an ankle. But how much are you willing to risk? How much do you want to bank on that happening? That right hand was a wake-up call for Tony. This is, you know, there's nice a certain react. kind of fight nice that can get a young fighter nice experience. experience. There's another kind of fight that can ruin it. And too many more rounds like this, you can ruin a young fighter. It's very well put. That was another good right hand of the body by Tony. He's just stalking Booker now. And that right hand just right through the glove of Booker. Now, having talked about the kind of the obvious disparity in skills here, it is a joy to watch Tony fight. It is a joy to watch Tony fight. For, a, for an average fan who just loves to see blood and guts and, and, and knockouts, and also for the connoisseur who loves to see this kind of upper echelon all-time skill. It's a joy to watch the guy fight. All right, stop it! Break! Deep breath. Sean O'Grady right now is in the corner of James Tony, and I imagine, Sean, uh, everybody's... Uh, Pretty uh, relaxed right now. Yeah, a lot of silence over here in this corner. I think they're watching the beauty. Freddie Roach, a terrific Hall of Fame trainer. What do you see? You know, James is doing what he's supposed to be doing. We, you know, this we knew this guy's undefeated, but he never fought the class of James Tony. You know, he's 22 and 0, but he's never really faced anyone like James. And I just want James to go out there, get some rounds, break him down to the body, and take him out later on. Nice, so, nice word downstairs to the body. Do you think there'll be a point where James just gets tired of this and ends this fight? Definitely, you know, he's uh, he can pick it up if he wants to. Right he's just kind of playing with the guy right now. I notice you guys over here rubbing his arm. Something wrong with his, with his biceps? What's that uh, you know, he went on a bit of a, a weightlifting program and got a little bit maybe too big, and he's a little bit tight. Yeah, a little tight, but he still has to, he has to feel good. Getting a little bit of work, Barry. Break. All right, thanks very much. And uh, it is exactly as Freddie Roach drew it up. And I'll tell you, those two guys are a pretty tough team to beat, Freddie Roach and James Tony. Freddie knows from whence he speaks. One of the all-time great hearts in boxing, one of the all-time great good guys. And right now, uh, one of the all-time great guys. And right now, one of the best trainers in the game, and he's got one of the best students. And, and truth be told, how much is James actually going to learn at this point in his career? It's Freddie's job to make sure that James stays focused, comes in in shape. But in, in the past, and I, I like you, I've done a ton of James Tony's fights going all the way back to when he was a middleweight. There were times he just wouldn't show up. And those days are gone. I mean, he maybe knows the clock is ticking There's for whatever reason. There's a sense of urgency now, He's Barry. a different guy. You're right. Let's go back, take a look uh, at how this fight has progressed. We'll take you back to round number three. First of all, the fight really has been all James Tony since the first round. Yeah, the hard jab, the precise body shots. He's still defensively responsible. See, see how he gets the right hand up to avoid the left hook, then throws a three-punch combination. You see the fourth round action. Rydell missed all four of those punches. Couldn't land the jab. Tony works on the inside with the right uppercut. You talked about it earlier. You can see how he rolls, and he never really get hit, gets hit squarely, even though he is pretty much in front of his man. That's right, and even when he gets hit with one shot, he doesn't get hit with the combination. Everyone can get hit with a shot every now and then. You never see a guy tag James with two or three shots in a row. As lost as you see since 1997. I mean, here's the deal. There's no question about it. And there is kind of a vacuum right now in the heavyweight division. And I, I say that with all due respect to Chris Bird, who I think is a, not only a classy guy, but a classy champion, too. But Chris is more evidence. Chris is a naturally slighter guy who saw opportunity at heavyweight because he is so good. And because, uh, you know, he doesn't look at any of these guys like they're really that much of a threat. Tony comes out all business here in round number right, six. Nice and relaxed. Let's go. Let him go right down. Let's go. Get on there, Bobby. Get on there. Let his hand go right down. Let his hand go. Okay, stop. Break. Let's go. Tony has that look that he could probably take Booker anytime he wants. Last time I said that, the guy I said it about got knocked on his butt. Who was it? Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> it was against Howard Stop. in his comeback fight. Kevin, the spoiler, Howard. Yes. As soon as I said Leonard could take him out anytime he wants, Howard hit Leonard and he went down. You know, the funny thing, though, is Leonard in that fight, you could see he was, his heart wasn't in it. He didn't want to be fighting. James Tony loves to fight.